Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. So gonna, I've come back to a place where I was. I did a 10 image challenge about a month ago and I was in this location. It's called Barvik Burn, but I'm coming to visit the falls of Barvik. So it's quite dark in there tonight. There's a lot of clouds in the sky. There's not a huge amount of sun. So follow me and let's see where this journey takes us. All right, so let's walk into the woods and let's see what we can see. Um, looks fairly brightish for here, but it looks really, really dark inside, as you can see. All right, so let's have a wee nosy and see what we can see. So if I put my tripod, if I put my tripod down, that area in there that's really dark is the Barvik Falls. There's been a couple of trees that have fallen in the water since we were last here. So I'm going to have to navigate my way around the trees. I've put my wellies on because what I want to try and do is get round and into that basin at the foot of the falls and let's see if we can get any images. So what I'll do is I'll connect back with you once I reach the base of the falls. All right, so I've managed to climb into the basin. I'll just turn the camera around so you can see where I am. Um, there would be a nice shot further down there of that bridge. I'll just tilt the camera up. I'm actually quite deep in the gorge as you can see. If I come back down, so my plan is, <laughs> my plan is, let me just tilt the camera up, my plan is to go over here, stand there because that water here is way far too deep, I've already tried it with the tripod legs, so I can't stand in there, so what I'll try and do is get the waterfall coming down from the top right, swinging round and then coming into the pool, so that's the intention, here's hoping I can get back to the tripod okay. All right, so I've picked up this fallen log just to steady myself because these rocks are slippy when I've got my wellies on. Whoops, that's the depth and it gets deeper and deeper. So, I'll lay that there. I've put my wide angle lens on um, because I think my 24 to 70 is probably too close for this one so let's see how we go on if I look at this dark scene right yeah definitely the right choice to go for the 20 the 16 to 34 the wide angle lens so what I'll do here is I haven't put a polarizer on and the reason I haven't put a polarizer on is it's really dark in here and the other thing is there's not a huge amount of light coming in because of the tight canopy of the trees so any reflections that I get will be welcome because I don't want to suppress them especially in this light and if it had been direct sunlight then I would have wanted the polarizer so what I'll do is I'll set my f-stop to f11 I'll focus in on the falls right so what I'll also do is set my timer to two second timer and then that way I'm not causing any vibration so set my lens to manual Set my, sorry I'm slipping everywhere, set my lens to manual, set my timer to two seconds, I've got a fifth of a second, F11 ISO 100, and the reason I've got ISO 100 is because I'm in a dark area and because I'm using a tripod, I can, I can afford to extend the shutter speed because it's stable on the tripod. So I'm just going to look at those images because what I was hoping was it would smoothen out some of the water for me. And it has, it's, that's really nice actually. So, I just noticed I'm getting a little bit of a green sheen on the water, but that's okay. I can um, either remove that or just enhance it. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a panoramic shot, but I'm going to do a vertical panoramic shot. And I'll probably take one, two, three, 
three, maybe four shot. And once I've taken that vertical panoramic shot, I'll share that image with you now. All right, so for this next shot, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus in again to the falls. I'm still at F11. I'm just checking I've got, I'm in focus. I've got a fifth of a second again in ISO 100. My exposure meeting is showing I'm underexposed, but that's okay. But I've cropped in. So I've zoomed in a little bit so that I've got the, a tighter scene. And let's see how that shot goes. I'm just checking the flow of the water on a waterfall. Everything else looks pin sharp and I really like that water. The water's really, really nice. Cascading down, it's nice and soft. And it's coming down an S bend into the pool. So I'm just wondering if I could maybe go vertical. Oh, and I might get a nice reflection that way. So what I'll do is I'll take this vertical shot and that means I'm turning my camera portrait. I'll make sure my focus, because I've changed the focal length of my lens, I'll need to check my focus. Let me just check. I'll take that shot. I'm still keeping the same settings just because it's really, really dark. Ideally, I'd love to be over here, way over on the left, and I can get the face of the falls. But there might be a path that I could follow along the other side of the burn and then try and climb down and then stand at the base here and then look up. Um, so just, I never mentioned, I mentioned that this was the Barvik Falls, but this is also the Barvik Burn. And the Barvik Burn um, flows through from Loch Turret. Right, so what I'll do now is I'm going to see if I can get a wider view, panoramic view of the falls, but also take in quite a lot of the canopy. So what I might do is maybe nine shots. So I'll take those nine shots, I'll stitch them together and I'll show you that image now. All right, so what I'll do now is I'll just move further back and I'll take some shots maybe from inside the water looking on to the falls if I can get them. And then what I'll also do is I'll look down the way because there's an image down the way out with reflections. So let's get back safely and see what more images we can capture. So before I go in the water, what I've done is I've stepped back because I turned the camera on to see if there was a view here with a wide angle lens. It's actually quite nice. So what I was trying to do is get the camera level and then use what I can see of the fall sweeping down and then I can get a wider view of the pond. But equally I've got all the rocks and boulders here and the green moss on the left hand side will come up really really nice so what i'll do is i'll focus halfway in to my image i'll just zoom in make sure i can see that properly take that shot there see how that goes still got a fifth of a second still got f11 still got iso 100 and that's really nice all right so what I want to try and do is get this shot face on. So I've changed lenses, I've moved away from the wide angle lens and I've moved to the 24. And the main reason I've done that is because I want to get a kind of more zoomed effect shot when I finish here down the burn towards the bridge. So here, what I have, a composition that's more or less dead on. I'm just trying to see some nice reflections in the water there. Right, so this would be a nice two, three shot image. So I'll take the first shot. I'm conscious I'm moving about in the water, but it's five seconds. So that should smoothen it out. And it has, and that's really nice. So I'll just move up a tad. And then what I'll do once I finish this third shot, I'll then zoom in and I'll look for areas of interest from this angle because I don't see myself coming back to this spot and I'll just take that image. We're getting some nice warm orangey yellow glow in the canopy, the trees 
and we probably can't see that here. Right, so now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to see what images I can get here or what kind of compositions I can get as I'm zooming in. So we've got a nice rock face to my right hand side. I've got the tops of the falls coming in. I've got the S bend. I'm just making sure I'm in focus. There. A fifth of a second. F11. Still using ISO 100. That's great. Right, so what I'll do is I'll turn the camera around to vertical or portrait mode. I'm going to zoom in because what I want to try and do is get a bit of that canopy. I'll just level this off a wee bit. There. I'll just zoom out a bit. Right. You know, this would be a cracking spot if we just had a wee bit of sun and the sun hitting various sides of the gorge here. That'd be really, really nice, but well, we can't have everything and to be fair, in Scotland we can't plan the weather. So let me just get this focus right here. Take that shot and I'm just wondering how far right I can move. Yep, and that could be a nice shot. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I've just spotted I, how, I don't know how far over I can get, but I'm just going to be careful as I go forward because I can see it's really, really deep on my right hand side. Right, that would be nice. So if I, and my <laughs> tripod sinking <laughs> in the sand here. Right, so that's really nice. So what I'll do is I'm just going to level up my camera, focus in on the centre of the image, take the shot, and that could be really nice. So what I'll do before I go is I'm just going to zoom in, because what I want is just the S bends from this angle. Take the shot, and then what I've got is a close-up shot of the S bends. That's quite nice. Right, so I've got a nice shot here, hopefully, right, so what I want to try and do is get as much of the reflections as I possibly can, I'll level up the camera, right, so again my focal point is that bridge, I've zoomed in on the bridge, so let me just focus in on the bridge, and there's gates underneath the bridge to stop the sheep from coming up the burn. So I'll take the first shot, so I've got a composition, I've got an exposure that gives me nice reflections and a nice light. Let me speed that up just a tad to an eighth of a second just to make sure I've got the right light through the bridge. And then what I'll do is, I'll bring this up to half a second. I'm just one stop underexposed. I could probably lift the shadows from that, but just to make sure, if I bring that up to two seconds, I'll take this shot, and then that gives me loads of options to play with when I go back, to kind of balance the image as much as I possibly can. I'll do a quick three exposure compensation shots, just in case I need them. And then what we'll do now is we'll work our way around the edge to see if there's anything more of interest and then before we leave I'm going to try and climb over the other side of the gorge and see if I can work my way down to the base of that waterfall. So, before we go anywhere, I've spotted the picture of what I was looking for of under the bridge. So let me level off the camera. Let me speed up the shutter speed. Right, it needs to go right up. So, I'm just going to focus in underneath the bridge. Pin sharp. Tenth of a second, F11. ISO 100, and what I'll do now is just lift the foreground to a quarter of a second because my focal point's a bridge and that could be a really nice image. I'm happy with that. Everything else is a wee bit too messy. So the sun's coming out actually, so the sun's coming through the trees. So what we might do is I'll climb up that way. 
I'll come down the other side of the gorge and uh, let's see if we can get in front of that waterfall. All right, so we've climbed to the other side of the gorge. Let me up the ISO. And then that way you can see. So, that's where we were shooting earlier, over here, and uh, let's figure out a safe way to climb down. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way to this ridge here at the base of the falls, uh, because the canopy of the trees is absolutely stunning, so I'm going to start from there, and then I'll work my way down. But that's my first protocol. Uh, maybe a wee bit too close, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Ooh. Right, so. I wanted this shot because, just make sure my tripod's steady and me because the canopy of those trees are amazing right so I've got the swooping of the water coming down let me just check wow so I'm going to put the trees round about the top third now what I'll do is I'll zoom in to the top left hand side of the falls here. I'll get that in focus. I'll take my shot, I've got a fourth of a second, F11 ISO 100. And that's really... So if I zoom in, what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit because I want to get the curvature of the falls in frame I'll zoom out just a little bit just to give me some space I'll do that again because this is this could be this could be really really nice so I'm going to take a one exposure for the trees and then I'm going to zoom in on the rocks in the top right hand side. Take that shot. And I keep looking behind me and the sun's absolutely lit up the trees, it's really nice. Right, so there's not really a panoramic shot here. So what I'll do as I'll slowly work my way back down and then I'll try and get another shot of the falls from the bottom. I'm just in the middle of the stream, it's not too bad, so it's quite light, so the vibration shouldn't, whoops, shouldn't come through. Right, so I've got a panoramic composition here that looks quite nice. I mean, this is going to be much better as a vertical, but let me give this a wee try. So I'm going to focus in on the top right hand side. There, I'll take the shot. I've got four seconds of a timer, F11 ISO 100. And the reason I've left it at four seconds is a further back, so it'll be darker. What I will do is drop it to two seconds to see. Oh, it's taking it way underexposed. Right, so I'm going to take it back up. I'll maybe have it at 3.2. So I'll take a shot at 3.2. And then what I'm going to do is tilt the camera down. And then I might... Oh, see, that's lovely. Um, tilt the camera down. Take that shot, because then I could make myself a wee vertical pano if I want it. And the other thing that's really, really nice here is the contrast of the white water the black rocks, then you go to a kind of dryish rock that's yellowy green, and then you've got all this green moss, 
But what's really helping is the brown for the dead leaves. All these dead leaves, that brown is really popping and actually could make quite a nice dark effect image. Right, let me just see where I am here. See, this could be a nice shot here. So I'm going to focus into the top of the falls. I'm keeping my 3.2 second shutter speed. Oh wow. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, right, so what I can do now is go lower down. There's a log here. <clears throat> so what I might do is use that log as that kind of focal point of interest. But also see if we can use the log as a leading line up the waterfall. To be fair, not that we need it because the water's naturally snaking, snaking down in a flow. Right, I'll shut up and we'll move over. So, I've kept my camera at a vertical composition so that I can get that tree in focus. So what I might have to do for this shot is... Right, so here's what I want to do. I want to make sure I've got everything... I want to make sure I've got everything. I'm just checking my composition here. I want to make sure I've got everything in focus. So I'm going to do a focus stack. <clears throat> and what I'll do is I'll focus on the log, I'll focus in the middle of the image, and then I'll focus in the trees in the background. And then what I'll do is I'll stitch that together. So I'll put my hand in front of the camera. So this is when I should really write on my hands. Stack and exposures. So that I'll use one hand that I know I'm focus stacking and then another hand when I know I'm taking multiple exposures or panos. Um, I might try that one time. I've only just thought of that just now actually. Right, let me focus on the tree stump. Alright. <clears throat> so what I'll do is, I'll keep taking the shots and then I'll share that focus stacked image of the waterfall with you. All right, so what I'll do now is, I'm going to check the depth of that pool and just see if I can get another composition all the way from the bottom, all the way up to the top of the waterfall. All right, so I'm now at the bottom of the falls. So what I'm going to try and do is take a couple of shots where I've got the base of the falls here, so I've got the rock pool in front of me. I've focused in on the top right hand side. I've got a fifth of a second F11 ISO 100. And then what I'll do is I'll tilt the camera up and that'll give me two shots. I'll give me two separate shots, so if I need it, I've got it. But equally, if I want to join them together, then I can and then I can have a tall vertical panoramic. But I really, I really love the canopy, the trees, because of the colour, so what I'll do is I'll just go up a wee bit more. That's just not going to work as a panoramic, that's for sure. Now what I'll do is, to make it a wee bit different, I'll turn the camera around on vertical, and then we'll see what difference that makes. So I'm conscious that I want to get those little falls here on the left. I'm just double check my focus. I know I'm fo I've only tilted my camera, but I just want to make sure it's okay. There. Fifth of a second, F11, ISO 100. Let's see what we've got here. And I'm getting some nice reflections in the water, actually. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can zoom in and get, there's um, quite a few logs that has come down over the waterfall. So I'll zoom in as far as I can go, even although this is a wide angle lens. I've got the two logs 
What I might do is drop that. I've got a nicer composition if I put the falls in the top third. So what I'll do is I'll just change my composition rounds. Make sure I've got those rocks in focus. Take the shot. Now I'm just going to double check the water because I'm shooting at five seconds for this water because I'm so far away and it's really, really dark. So let me just check. Oh, it's pin sharp. Right, so what I'm going to do, there's a beautiful reflection here in the gorge. So I'm just going to turn round. Let me reposition the tripod because I suspect this is going to be my last image and that's really really nice let me see right so for this shot what I'm trying to set up my composition in such a way that the water from this the falls is flowing down out of my image in the bottom left I'm going to zoom in to those rocks that I like Make sure they're in focus. I'll zoom in again. Take the shot. Again, I'm at five seconds. So what I might have to do, that'll be too long. Well, it's nice. It smooths out the water. But I'd quite like to try and get the reflections if I can. Let me just check. Well, I think I'll call it quits. This has been amazing. The fact that I was able to cross over and uh, get down in front of the waterfall. Magic. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed this. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been brilliant tonight, and luckily it's not rained. If you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do, because you know it's free. And if you press the bell notification, that'll let you know the next time I post a video. So thanks very much for watching and here's to the next video.